Hey y'all, welcome to Backcountry Cuisine. Today we're making pizza. Oh yeah. It's one of my favorite dishes out in the backcountry. I mean, it's like, how do you get any better than pizza? Seriously, pizza? Let's do it. Don't you worry then, my buddy. You may not have any pizza, but I've got enough for us to share. Alright, so uh, yeah, I'm cheating a little bit here because I'm not actually in the back entry. I'm sitting here with my chickens, doing my thing in my hammock, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. So, how do we begin? Uh, at home, I packaged up all my ingredients into this one little quart size Zip Ziploc bag. It's actually not quite a quart. And uh, so I broke it up though into pieces. So I've got my, my cheese, very important component. I've got my flour and I've got all my other ingredients so I decided to put it all inside this other bag this has got my sauce in it my tomato sauce it's got um, ground beef mushrooms uh, broccoli uh, so that's gonna be my my kind of filling and I'm gonna keep it all into one thing and, and uh, make it all pasty and uh, go from that you can do it separately so you can rehydrate your all your vegetables and meat and things like that separately and then add in add it to your meal that's probably a, a more um, thorough way to cook it but I want to try this and see if it'll rehydrate enough while it's baking so that's my goal but while I'm getting everything set up I'm gonna start by adding water to this and let it re start rehydrating right now because that part takes a little bit of time we'll start. How much water do you add? I don't know. I eyeball it. I'm just that kind of guy though. I know that this, the veggies and the meat and even that sauce can take up quite a bit of water. So I'm gonna start with a fair bit. I got quite a bit of water in here. Zip back up again. it really is sealed up that's messy and then make sure you get the, the water down into the corners down here or else you'll get lumps of dry food all right so it's pretty liquidy it's pretty liquidy it's pretty wet in there uh, I would if I was just doing the sauce part and that was all I was doing I would make this a much thicker paste but because I've got all my veggies and my meat in here that are rehydrating I'm gonna make it pretty watery if you were going to do some pepperoni or something like that, I didn't have any pepperoni, so I just grabbed some uh, dried ground beef that I have that I keep in the freezer. And uh, so if you had more things that were already rehydrated, like pepperoni, I would have less water in here as well. And then you can always add more water later. That's, that's not a big deal. But taking the water out, that's a little harder. So get that going. Let that start. Put it off to the side. I'll put it over to this side. Put my cheese over here. <clears throat> now I'm not gonna make the uh, the dough yet. I'm gonna wait on that, hold off for a second, and uh, get the stove all set up first. Okay. Well, there's my chickies. That one's red. Say hi, red. Oh, I see how it's gonna be. A little more interested in the, the hot dog bun that my wife just threw out. I see how it is. I see how it is. Okay, my cooking kit, my baking kit. Got an Evernew. 1.3 liter pan, titanium ever titanium pan. And then I use these Fat daddy -O pans from, you can get them at Amazon. This one's a five by two inch, and they are amazing. They're pretty thick walled, but still not that heavy. And uh, they do an awesome job baking, an awesome job baking. They fit really well inside the pan. You can, I took the rim off because it's a little lighter, which is a real pain to get that rim off, but um, I did it. So you can do it without taking that rim off, and it works great. These pans, they're only about eight bucks or something like that. They're not that expensive. Though. So yeah, it's just gonna sit flat right in the bottom of this. There's that piece. This, I, I usually use Esbit. That's my favorite fuel of choice to bake. And I chose to use a canister stove today just because I don't do it very often, and I wanna practice with it and try it out, see if I like it or not, or see if I ever wanna take it in the backcountry. 
And then I'm using It's a Snap windscreen, the Bobcat windscreen from Flat Cat Gear as my windscreen today. Yeah. Right, so I got that. And I got my uh, stove. The stove I'm using is the Kobe Spider. And I like the Spider because it's a remote canister stove. So instead of having the canister underneath your stove, it's a remote one. So that keeps your stove profile low. It also um, keeps the, the heat of the baking itself the coming back onto the stove and the canister, heating up the canister and changing the pressure that comes out. So I kind of like this more. All right. Got my canister. This is a Mondo canister. I would never take this in the backcountry. But if I'm doing testing and practice at home, it's a lot cheaper this way. Right. right. I'll sit on top of there. Okay, so let's make that, uh, let's get it all set up in the pan now. Now see what happened was, I forgot my parchment paper. God, see, it's the kind of thing that happens when you're not thinking ahead. What I strongly recommend, uh, I, I love using parchment paper. You put it in the bottom of your pan, like this. And that keeps the baked good from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Like it might stick a little bit to the sides, but you can stick a fork or something around the outside to break that loose. But getting it underneath is always tough. So the parchment paper, super, super lightweight little piece of material, and it's so convenient, so much nicer to use. So uh, I don't get fancy and cut it round. I just cut it square and then let the corners come up the sides. It's never been a problem for me. It's always fine. So uh, just take one of those pieces for each one of your baked goods and put it in your bag with everything else, and then you won't forget it, like I did. Okay, so let's make our dough. You want to start off with very little water. I mean, this is only a half a cup of flour. You need like a tablespoon or two in here. So like, just a little bit of water. I messed up once. Come on, be careful now. Just a little bit of water. I'll probably need more than that, but you know, I don't want to push it. I already ruined it once. Don't push it. Yeah, see that's not enough water yet. That's okay though. Add another little tablespoon. There we go. And it can change quick, right? You see off the top, you're less likely to make a mess. It's good advice. And somebody's made a mess before. Now you may be tempted to add more water now. No, sir. I'm gonna leave it a little bit. It should be getting, um, it should start to feel a little bit dry as it starts to absorb. And then, it'll start pulling away from the sides of the back. And that's perfect, it's exactly what you want. This is how you do it without getting your hands dirty. See, hands, perfect and clean. And it's perfect, and uh, as you go, you just kinda keep taking material off the side of the bag, and you'll get well over 98% of the, the dough out of the bag. Works great. All right, I got most of it done now, so I'm gonna pull it out. Put it in the pan. Just right on top of the parchment paper. That's pretty good. I got almost all of it out. I could have worked harder and got more, but I'm not willing to. At least not right now. Maybe if I had to pack it out, maybe I'd work harder. All right, so now it's just a press fit. Now you're just gonna press it into the bottom of the pan and get it to fill up the whole bottom. Alright. 
So you can see, went pretty far up the sides there, maybe halfway. This is a, a half cup of the baking mix that I was using. It's Pamela's gluten-free. Uh, so this is a half cup of that with water. So I would say more like three quarters of a cup if you actually wanted to come all the way up to the, the lip of the, of the pan. But pretty darn good. All right, let's check out our filling. Already it's thickening up. It's still kind of liquidy, which is fine because there's still stuff going in there, but I can feel that my mushrooms and my meat and all that, they're already softening up pretty good. And this isn't, I didn't cook it, it's not hot water, it was just cold water right out of the, the thing, so no big deal. All right, let's get, let's start filling it up. Okay, that's it, we're ready to roll. So now we get the stove going. Um, now this does a pretty good job at simmering, this Kobea spider, but it is a very small little burner head, and so you're going to get a lot of heat right in one spot of your pan. So it's nice if you can elevate it a little bit, or spread it out somehow. I got my sticks. So now you just put these sticks through these little vent holes. Uh, I hope it's obvious, but maybe it's not. Make sure you're using metal tent sticks, not plastic ones. Uh, plastic ones would not work as well. They may have some uh, melting issues. All right, so we got that. We put our baking pan right on the bottom of our pot. And just set it right in there. That's it. And now you can see it's kind of elevated up here. That's still pretty hot. I'm going to turn it down. You should be able to hold your hand there for at least a little bit. A few seconds. Okay. Put our lid on. It's one of my chintzy pie plan ultralight lids. Works well, but it doesn't always keep the heat in very well. Even a regular pan doesn't do a, a lid doesn't do a great job at holding the heat in. So I often will use a little piece of uh, bubble wrap like this stuff here. It's foil line bubble wrap. You can use that to cover over top. And I guess I could just do this. Just to provide a little bit more insulation in there. That's all it's doing. Just to kind of keep some of that heat in there. Keep the heat coming up to the top of the the, uh, the baked good. The pizza. So, well now, there's not much to do. You just gotta sit around and wait. Alright, a little nap couple chores and uh, you're about ready. It's been about half an hour-ish, 25 minutes, half an hour, something like that. So let's take a look and see what we got going on. The big reveal. Oh, oh it looks quite lovely actually. Definitely has a good smell. There's no doubt there. Yeah, you look at that. Nice and cheesy. The crust looks kind of golden on the corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera in. You can take a closer look yourself. All right, so what you can see here, it's got this golden crust to it. Hopefully you can see that. It's nice and toasted. I think we're ready. I mean, this looks nice and gooey and chewy. Oh, yum. Okay, so uh, it's been five minutes or so. Let's give it a shot. Oh, still steamy. I just put this lid on there just to keep a little of the heat inside. But the pan, it's touchable. I'm slightly burning my fingers but you know it's not too bad all right that's not really what I wanted to do ouch all right can you see it yeah let's uh, work to release the sides free. Now this is pretty soft. I'm feeling it's pretty soft. It may not hold together. It's gonna be a bit of a mess. I would probably just eat it right out of the pan just like it is now if I was, but I want to show you. I want to show you what I created because you can't taste the crust in the video, but you can see. So I want to see if I can take this thing out and depending on how much it sets up, sometimes it comes out and it's nice and uh, holds up pretty well. And the cooler it is, of course, the more it'll hold up, but I want to eat it when it's hot. 
Ha 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 ha, there we go. Okay. So here is my deep dish pizza. Check out this browned crust. If I could somehow do this ooh, without it breaking. Uh, it's even brown at the bottom. You can't really see that very well. It's breaking because it was thin crust. I didn't go thick on it, but it's ready to roll. And I think I'll torture you now by eating some of it right in front of your face. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of excited, kind of scared. It's hot. No, it's a big bite. But. Mm hmm. Yeah. It came out good. The, uh, the sauce. Thinking it up really nicely. The vegetables. Totally cooked. Mmm. Super good. And the crust is nice and crispy. Oh. Yeah. That's good. So you might be wondering, like, uh, that was a powdered sauce mix? Like, where, where did you get that from? Well, <laughs> that, my friend, is a heirloom family tradition passed down zero generations and it will go to my grave with me you have to rip it out of my dead hand before I'll give it to you or you could just go to backcountrycuisine.net it's under the sauces marinara sauce that's all it is it's the same thing um, yeah so it's the marinara sauce uh, which is really just tomato powder and uh, garlic powder and onion powder and some herbs like mixed herbs Italian herbs that's it uh, not, nothing else it's just that easy super um so yeah check it out and um try it yourself see if you can make one of these at home awesome super tasty and then when you get in the backcountry it's like nothing else unreal so eat well and we'll see you next time at the backcountry cuisine